In the last tutorial, we did a thermal simulation of a coffee mug, and we saw the ways that the heat from the liquid was conducting itself through the mug and into the handle. In this tutorial, I want to show you some changes I made since the last one and how I've improved on my simulation uh, inputs in order to get a more accurate result. So here, where it says contacts, what one of the big changes I've made is now my contacts are offset bonded and I rechecked all of my contacts to be sure that they're exactly what I want. So you'll notice that my one solid is being taken up by this first uh, contact set and my second solid is being taken up completely by the second one. So all the faces of the mug are part of this and all the faces of the, of the liquid coffee are part of this one. As long as that's accurate, you should get an accurate result. And the fact that they're now all offset bonded means that even if the two bodies are not touching, they're still touching in terms of the contact type. So they're still touching in terms of the simulation. That being said, um, my Applied temperature is at what it was before, 205 Fahrenheit. But we want to have a little bit of fun here. And if we look at our results, we can see what we have now. We have a maximum temperature of 205 Fahrenheit here at the bottom. And this value, 75 Fahrenheit here, is what we have on the handle. Now, on the last simulation, our results in terms of these values were a bit inaccurate. Now they've been brushed up and they're much more accurate to what they would be in real life. So what I can do is I can do an inspection here and create a slice plane uh, just to see what's going on within what we have currently. So I'm just going to set a plane there and I can drag my uh, temperature all the way down. And so th this is the sort of thing that we have right now. We have a more consistent kind of temperature going through. And what we want to do uh, for, for some fun is we want to go back to apply temperature. And we're going to change this from 205 um, up to 300. Now the thing about this is that this is really just for fun and just for simulation. In real life, the the hottest liquid that you would ever have in a cup is likely going to be 212 Fahrenheit. And the reason is because 212 Fahrenheit or 100 Celsius is when water boils. And you wouldn't really have liquid that's any hotter than that in a cup uh, because it would just boil off at that point anyway. But we're going to set this at 300 Fahrenheit. Um, I can even just set it to 350, you know, uh, just because of the fact that we're we're doing something that would never really happen in the real world. But within the bounds of simulation, um, we can still test these things and we can still play around with these things to see what's going to happen. So I'm going to run my simulation again and we'll see the results soon. Here are our results shown. And as you can see, our max temperature is now 350 Fahrenheit as we've um, placed into our input. And the minimum temperature here on the handle is 82.68 Fahrenheit. And so there isn't really much of a difference uh, visually. If I turn off my slice plane, we can see um, the whole mug here. And if I turn this down, you can see that it's pretty much the same as before. The one thing that I want to try is I want to change the temperature by a lot. So I'm going to make this instead of 350, I'm going to make this 1000 Fahrenheit. And let's see if we can make this handle change. Now the temperature is going to change, but I wonder if there's any difference in the proportion of blue to red and the proportion of heat in the different areas of it. So here are our results. 
And as you can see, there's really little change in our proportion, but the temperature itself has changed on the handle. So this handle is now 105 Fahrenheit, whereas the hottest part of our simulation is 1000 Fahrenheit. So uh, I think that this is really a great way of showing how effective the handle really is. If you have a thousand Fahrenheit or a thousand Celsius or a thousand whatever unit you want to use, it's only going to yield 105 Fahrenheit when it gets to the handle. Now, the interesting uh, thing about that is the way that geometry plays into this. The handle is strong enough that it's not going to break. It's going to allow you to hold it comfortably but it also doesn't allow heat to conduct very well through this sort of uh, thin piece. And if we look at the proportion and we look at the ratio, we could see that 1,000 Fahrenheit, you know, 105 Fahrenheit divided by 1,000 Fahrenheit, that's about one-tenth. So you're losing about nine-tenths of the heat as you move from this point to this point, which is the coolest point. Now, again, I can kind of cycle through um, our hottest and coldest parts, but it's really about the same. The proportion has stayed the same when the values have changed. And so that's definitely one big thing that, that we've learned here. And that's our simulation. Now, another thing I can do is I can choose to change the material. So here we're using glass. Um, as a substitute for ceramic. Now, I can choose to change this from glass to, say, um, aluminum. That's another material that's, um, that can be used. Um, we can also try copper, but um, aluminum I want to see because it has, it's very conductive. So if we hit OK, um, what I can do is I can load our results again and see how our simulation changes uh, based on this new material. Our results have loaded, and as we can see, there's a tremendous difference between glass and aluminum as the mug material. When we were looking at glass, we noticed that our max temperature was 1000 Fahrenheit, and our minimum temperature at the center of the handle was about 100 Fahrenheit. Now that we've switched materials from glass to aluminum, we see that our maximum is 1000 Fahrenheit still, but our minimum is now 866 Fahrenheit. Before, we lost about 9 tenths of the heat between the hottest part and the coldest part. But now that we've switched to a material with better conductance, we see that our max is still 1000, but our minimum is now 866. So we've only lost about one or two tenths. I'm sorry, uh, eight or nine tenths of it. Now, if I cycle through our temperature, you can see that the results are similar to what we've had before, but with one stark difference. With aluminum, the heat is more evenly distributed through the mug section this large wide section, the cylindrical section. When I move the slider down, you can see that a lot of this part disappears all at once. That's because a lot of this part is around the same temperature, which is 973 Fahrenheit. But when we get to the handle, there is still a large difference. Here we're at this temperature of, I would say, about 960. Uh, but as we move down, we get to 866 at the end. And the difference between 960 and, and 860 is, is really very small here. Only, you know, 10% 10, 10 uh, based on the maximum temperature. Um, and so you can see that the heat conductance in that regard is also very good with aluminum uh, because the, the temperature between the highest and lowest 
um, the values are very close to each other. Now, if we placed our heat source here at the handle, we would see great heat conductance going through the handle, but it would really just be the opposite. You would see that it's very hard for the, for the, um, the temperature to conduct itself through here, but it would still come into this large uh, sectioned area. And so uh, one more thing I, I wanna show is the legend options. Uh, you can change this to be large if you'd like, and it just makes it a little bit easier to, to see exactly what the value that you're looking at is. And if you have a banded color transition, um, I, I know it's definitely a stark contrast, it makes it a little bit easier to distinguish um, one heat zone from another. But like I was saying before, the red zone and the yellow zone, which are the, the hottest and second hottest temperature zones, are really very close to each other, and they all kind of are together here at the top. But the handle has three zones, and it's a much smaller section than the rest of the mug. So it's definitely something um, interesting to keep in mind. And so I really hope that you liked this thermal simulation. Um, the first part of the video uh, can be seen, it's already released. And this is really just an amelioration of the last setup. Like I said before, the contacts were changed. That's something to definitely watch out for now they are offset bonded. And I rechose all my faces to be sure that they're the exact faces I want. In terms of my contact set, I have the two bodies. That's the way that I set it up. And it seems to be a lot more accurate within this simulation. Uh, thank you.